We have two Titan RTXs, and today we're doing a shot here in the test lab because one of them is not working. It's stuck at 1350 megahertz. You might remember this issue. That would be that one right there. You might remember this issue from when we got some user cards and some cards from you all, and one of the EVGA cards was stuck at 1350 megahertz. That was a 2080 Ti. This is a Titan RTX. So quite a bit different in terms of the issue. It's about two times the difference in price. And uh, this is something we are now actively working with NVIDIA. They actually have a local office to us uh, with an FAE there, and they're sending someone out to swap cards with us. So we're planning to give them this card because it is stuck at 1350 megahertz. For perspective, it should be over 1900 megahertz. And they're going to give us a different one. That way we can get back to testing. So we have this card has gone through all the game tests. That one we need for SLI. And that's going to put a bit of a hold on things. But today I'm going to demonstrate how that is stuck at 1350 and what exactly we're going through. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the Gamers Nexus store. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our ceramic mugs, critically acclaimed mod mats, or educational video card teardown and PCB anatomy posters that teach the names and placements of all the key PCB components. Learn more at store.gamersnexus.net or click the link below. Here's the issue, here's the recap. Originally, with the EVGA 2080 Ti that we had from a viewer that was stuck at 1350 megahertz, it raised some alarm bells at NVIDIA, which is a good thing, but this was the only instance that they knew of that a card was stuck at 1350. Same for EVGA. And so the problem is we were able to fix it. And that's a problem because then it's hard to diagnose it because it's been fixed. So we fixed it by, we tried flashing it once with the original BIOS that was on there and didn't do anything. It was still stuck at 1350. And the power target was showing zero. Uh, which is something uh, another symptom we're seeing here. So we zoom in on the screen, you'll see a 0% right there. And uh, that's the same exact thing we saw on the EVGA card. So to fix this, we, um, we just reflashed it. And we, we flashed it twice. The first flash was with the original BIOS, did not fix anything. The second flash was with a slightly altered V BIOS, but there are no significant changes that we knew of, if any changes at all. And that fixed it. So problem solved, we sent it back to EVGA anyway on behalf of the user. And they, I mean, you can't really do anything with it because now it's fixed. Just for BIOS versions, if you're curious, this messed up card is 90.02.23.00.01. And uh, I saved previously the V BIOS from this card and the other one. And on the original ROM for the good Titan, it's 90.02.23.00.01, which is the same exact ID. And if you do a comparison of the two binaries, the same. And if we open up NV Flash, uh, we can also, if you've never done this, you can download it on Tech Power Up or a similar site. NV Flash 64 is what you want. You just do like dash dash protect off, and that will disable the uh, write protection. And then you can do a save name the BIOS.ROM, and that exports it, which is what we've done there. Now, if we wanted to load the good BIOS, what we do is dash dash six. I'm not going to type the rest because I don't want to accidentally hit enter and then mess up NVIDIA's ability to troubleshoot this. And then you type in the good BIOS name and flash it. And that would be the end of that. So um, we do think this is probably still an uncommon issue. But if you did run into it and you don't want to go through the RMA process, this tool NV Flash is how you would probably fix it. You could potentially just export your own BIOS from the card. So NV Flash 64.dxe uh, dash dash, you do protect off. And then the next thing you would do is save and give it like uh, original BIOS.ROM. We can show how that works actually. And then after that, you would do the dash dash six, like the number six and, uh, and target the ROM. And then that would write it to the card, write it back to it. You have to reboot in between. And, uh, and then it should probably fix it for you. But we're not going to do that today. So we want to help try and diagnose this issue at this point. Even though I really want to do SLI testing now, and I know I can flash that with the vBIOS from the one behind me, or even probably just reflash it with its own, and fix it. Because uh, when we extracted the vBIOS from both of these cards, the binaries are the same. It's the same vBIOS. So there's really no reason it should be messed up. But I'm 99% confident it's a vBIOS issue and flashing it will fix it. So anyway, I'll show you what's going on. What's happening 
is, uh, yes, the card is stuck at the 1350 megahertz, but some key identifiers to what a potential problem might be would be to look at the, uh, the readouts for hardware monitor or through GPU-Z. And we've shown these in the past in GPU-Z especially, where you've got a perf cap, perf cap reason, performance cap reason. This is something we've used for overclocking. You'll see it's displaying idle right now. And ideally under a load like Firestrike Ultra in the background, uh, it should be showing something like maybe power, PWR, or thermal, which would be THM. And, uh, and this is neither of those. Another common one is VREL for voltage limits. So those are kind of the limits you hit typically. And you will hit a limit by design. You'll hit something. It's just a matter of which one. Idle should not be where we're sitting because it's, it's not. So there's a problem. And 1350 megahertz also just happens to be the base clock of the card. Uh, and by coincidence, the 2080 Ti was also stuck at 1350, which makes me kind of curious about what's going on there because that wasn't its base clock. So it might just be coincidence. But uh, other than that, we can look at a lack of settings here. So GPU-Z typically for this card on, on the other one we have that works, uh, it will have a, a readout for the current power, the power consumption. And that should be like 280 watts plus under stock conditions. So we don't even have that. It's not appearing, which means something's wrong. Another thing that's not appearing, under hardware monitor on Precision X1, uh, with this red number one, we should have another option above GPU clock that says total power or something to that effect, and that is not appearing. Uh, so we've enabled the other ones, though. We have power limit, voltage limit, temp limit, no load limit, and GPU usage all enabled. And if we scroll through all of this stuff, you'll see GPU clock 1350. Memory clock's actually functioning uh, because GPZ shows 1750.2 megahertz, then you, you multiply it out and that gives you the correct clock number. So that, the memory's fine. GPU temperature's at 63, which is fine. Power limit, this is a binary, so it's either zero or one, and we are not hitting a power limit, so it's showing zero. Voltage limit, binary, it's showing zero, no limit currently. Temp limit, zero. Uh, no load limit is showing one, so we are at no load limit which just means it's not really being treated like it's under load. It's not being treated like it's doing anything. GPU usage is still showing up about 100% though. And then uh, memory usage is not really relevant, but it is showing about two gigabytes, but it doesn't really matter. And then frame rate, uh, I, I don't know how perfectly accurate this is, but it is consistent with the frame rate number we're getting in Firestrike right now that you probably can't even read. It's too blurry, but it's about 33. So it is actually putting out frames clearly just throw on everything else in terms of the core clock. There's also this really cool bug. So other than the power being zero right now, if we change the fan speeds, I've had issues here. I don't know if it's going to repro right now. Yes, it, it did do that. Uh, change the fan speed. The fan speed did not go up. You'd probably hear it on my mic if it did. And what we're getting is everything slowing to a crawl. So it's still rendering one frame. So it's, we're at about probably uh, <laughs> fractions of a frame per second right now. We're maybe at, maybe at about 0 0.25 frames per second. Um, so this is, this is clearly a bug. It should be increasing the fan speed. Not sure what's causing that. The last thing to show here is we have thermocouples hooked up to this. So we have a teardown that'll go live after this video goes live. And we did the teardown to stick thermocouples on here to try and diagnose things like we did with the 20 series, 2080 Ti. So just like with the 2080 Ti, the thermals are completely within reason. They're well within spec. And even when the when Firestrike is running at 36 FPS or whatever it was, Firestrike Ultra. So 53 degrees Celsius, that is for the, uh, that is for the memory, the RAM, and that's for the hottest memory module. 52.5 degrees for the hottest MOSFET that we could pinpoint. Both of those are way within spec. Memory is under 90, 95, that's fine. Uh, the MOSFET's under 125, 150 by a lot, so that's fine. And then ambient is 23 just for reference. So um, yeah, took it apart to stick thermocouples on it just to confirm, just like with the 20 series cards that you all were having problems with, uh, for the 2080 Ti's that everyone sent in, one of the things we looked at was, is it thermal? Is it some component that's not reported in GPU-Z like MOSFET memory? The answer was no. And so we redid that test here, stock thermocouples on MOSFET memory. And the answer is again, no, it is not thermal. So 
Tearing it down, unfortunately, and putting thermocouples on it doesn't help us here because it didn't really teach us anything. And the board itself, you know, it's, it's creating this 1350 megahertz lock. You look at the board, all the board components look fine. So this is a, a probably a either a lower level issue that we can't see, like in silicon or something, but that seems unlikely. And, uh, or a vBIOS issue, and that seems likely because last time it was a vBIOS issue and flashing this would almost certainly fix it. But we are going to leave this one defective so that we can help NVIDIA try and troubleshoot it because I'm very curious what the problem is. I know they are as well. Uh, the engineers there, you know, we, we can respect the position they're in because you make millions of video cards and then there are two that I happen to get that get stuck at 1350. And one of them wasn't even, it wasn't even mine to begin with. It was a viewer's. We just ended up with it. So it's not an issue with our test setup either because like there was a third party involved that sent it to us. And um, yeah, we can, we can respect the difficulty of making that many millions of cards and not being able to encounter one in your own controlled environment or lab. So we're gonna try and help them out. Maybe they can solve it. it does seem to be a, a low frequency issue. But uh, if you also encounter this, let us know because it's, it's hard to know exactly how many people are running into this. So post a comment below if you've encountered this on yours. Otherwise, we're still gonna be doing SLI testing. We're just waiting uh, from point of this video about maybe 16 hours, 12, 16 hours to get a swap from NVIDIA locally. And uh, then we can t continue SLI testing. We already have the review for the, the single card done and that's using this one, which is working without issue. So. We're good on that. But anyway, just wanted to show you the problem and show that it's come back. 1350 megahertz lock was not apparently entirely unique to that one EVGA card. Uh, NVIDIA is very interested in it. They want to solve it. And so that's good. And we're going to try and help them out with it because it's, um, it's a pretty serious problem. I mean, the, the card is utterly useless otherwise. So uh, you could RMA it but um, hopefully it just doesn't happen again. So keep us posted if you run into this with any of your cards and we'll do the same for you. As always, subscribe for more. Go to, that's lovely. Go to store.cameronsnexus.net to pick up a shirt, not like the one I'm wearing because it's out of stock. You bought too many of the disappointment shirts, but we're gonna refresh this design into a, a front only design at some point. Uh, or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus and check back for the review of the Titan RTX. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.